Hey everybody, Jeff Bates is my name. Dole Whip Dad is this channel. I'm glad you're here. A whole lot of new subscribers in the last 48 hours. If you're one of them, thank you. If you're one of the veterans, thank you. If you're new here, mostly Disney stuff, but lots of other stuff. Family-friendly content, Disney, some leadership, lots of food, stuff I like. Sometimes that's sports. And today, we're a little off topic because, well, I found something that I've been looking for and I thought I lost. And I'm so excited to share it with you. If you like old baseball cards, you're going to like this. If you're only here for Disney, I'll see you later. Be back tomorrow. This is awesome. Here it comes. Okay, so thanks for staying. I'm a baseball card collector. Now, when I say that, it really means I used to be a baseball card collector. I still collect them. Just not very often. My senior gift... My graduation gift, excuse me, from my mom and dad was a trip to New Jersey. At the time, I lived in San Diego, so that was a big deal. Me and a buddy flew across the nation all the way to Atlantic City, New Jersey for the National Baseball Card Convention. This would have been 1988, I guess. Yeah, pretty sure. I mean, that's the year I graduated high school, so it must have been. Long time ago, and I, I me and... My buddy collected baseball cards. It was a dream vacation for 18-year-old me. Super, super awesome. He bought a 1955 Roberto Clemente rookie card. That was what he wanted to buy. There was like, we the first day we walked the whole place to see what there was. And there was like three in the whole place. He found the one he wanted. He bought it. He was stoked. I, that day, tried to complete a set. I could have bought the whole set all in one. But I wanted to complete it myself by buying them individually I almost did. Let me explain a little further. Topps is the major baseball card company. Okay, there's a few others now. Topps was the biggest one for decades, and their first main set was in 1952. The iconic 1952 Mickey Mantle card is from that set. Basically, it was the first main baseball card set from Topps in 1952. Bauman had been a set. They started in 1948. There was a 51 set, the 52 set, and the 53 set. They started in 48. They left in 55. Tops started in 1952 and is still going strong. They're the standard in baseball cards. You heard what I said, right? 1952 was their first set, but not really. In 1951, they put out two sets, a red backs set and a blue backs set. And so my 18-year-old brain thought, that'd be cool. I'd like to put together that set because it's not as expensive at the time, nor is it now, as the 52 cards because they're iconic, they're rare, Mickey Mantle's rookie, all those things. The 1951 sets, two of them, I think there's 52 cards in the set. There is. I'll get to that in a minute. It seemed doable for 18-year-old Jeff. There's some pretty good cards in there, but not all of them were like, really expensive. There's a Duke Schneider in there. There's a Yogi Bear. There's there's some Hall of Famers in the set. Bob Feller's in the set. But there's not the entirety of Major League Baseball and the rookie cards that would have cost me thousands. So I set off to put together the set by going to different dealers and buying up the ones that I liked, trying to complete a set. Then I grew older. I was missing two cards from the set throughout the years because I came up short. I came up like five cards short, I think, on that trip. And I've, throughout the years, added cards. And then we moved from Southern California to Texas eight or nine years ago. And I never saw the cards. I would never have left them behind. I knew they were in a box. But you know how it is when you move. So I moved from California to Arlington, to Springtown, to Azel, to another town, or another place in Azel, to Hazlitt, and now to Fort Worth. That's a few moves in eight or nine years. You know, we, were, we moved here, we wanted to see if we liked it, we rented some houses, now we bought this house, we're here to stay, all right? And all that time, I never found them. That's a lot of moving, that's a lot of boxes left behind. And I gave up on them. Today, I went looking for some Disney Christmas decorations. Something spe specific and 
particular. And so I was looking for boxes that said Christmas on them. But now and then you get to a box and you open it up to see what's in there, right? Because you're moving boxes around. And I found them. And I got to be honest with you, I haven't been this excited for a non-family thing in years. I really had given up these cards for gone. I'm excited. The 1952 red back set. I'm two cards shy, but am I? I think I'm going to show you the cards. I'm excited. Here comes the set. I'm two cards away from the complete set, but not really. And I'll get to that when I'm showing you the individual cards. So in this ugly three ring binder, well, is stuff that I love. These are cards from the 1951 Redback set. In 2015, Topps came out with a tribute set. In them were current stars like Mike Trout and Clayton Kershaw. And I bought a few of them. And there's there's some that are only made 99 of them. And I bought two of those for a couple of the players I like. And it was it's just a really neat tribute set that the kids now and, and collectors now could pick up because these are these are more rare they're I mean they're not insanely rare but they're certainly harder to find than a 2015 card because again they're from 1951 and there's 52 cards in the set there's really 54 but I'll explain card number one is Yogi Berra obviously a hall of famer look at that beautiful beautiful card number two is a guy named Sid Gordon number three Ferris Fain now obviously you can see that card is pretty beat up you can see that I've got these in sleeves card number four Vern Stevens card number five Nobody's home. That's actually a Hall of Famer, Phil Rizzuto, where, who should go there. Here's the good news. I bought it. I bought that on eBay. It's just not with these cards. And I'll show it to you in another time, maybe on an update. Number six, Yankee great Allie Reynolds. Number seven is missing, too. These are the only two cards I'm missing. He's a guy named Howie Polette. Again, Howie Polette. No one's ever heard of him who's not in this family because, you know, it's Howie Polette. So I'll have to pick that up on eBay. The rest of the set I have. So 52 cards, actually 54, which again I'll explain here shortly. Card number eight, Hall of Famer Early Win. Look how beautiful that card is. Card number nine, Roy Seavers. Card number 10, Milt Parnell. Card number 11, Gene Hermansky. Card number 12, Jim Hegan. Those are the first 12 cards in the 52 card set. Again, 54 card set, actually, I'll explain. This guy's coming out. Sorry for my ugly hand there. Card number 13, Dale Mitchell. Card number 14, Wayne Terwilliger. Card number 15, Hall of Famer Ralph Kiner. I got to get this in a more beautiful three-ring binder because this thing's ugly, but that card's beautiful. Card number 16, Dodger Great Preacher Rowe. The end of his career there in 51. Card number 17, Dave Bell. Card number 18, Jerry Coleman, the great Jerry Coleman. Excellent World Series champion, second baseman for the Yankees, but I know him as the Padres announcer when I was growing up in San Diego. Card number 19, Dick Kokos. Card number 20, not Joe, not Vitz, but Dom DiMaggio. Love that card. Card number 21, Larry Jansen. Card number 22, the great Bob Feller. I actually met him. My dad took me to meet him, boy, probably a year or two before I collected this set. I'll be honest. He's one of the reasons I picked. There's a red back set and a blue back set. I could have picked either one as a 18-year-old kid. I picked this one likely because of Bob Feller because I met him. He was a really nice guy, iconic ball player, and I just thought there was better cards in this set, to be honest, players that I had heard of. Card number 23, Ray Broon. Hmm, let's try that again. Ray Boone. You've heard of him because he was daddy of Bob Boone, who was the daddy of Brett and Aaron Boone. Card number 24, Hank Bauer, Yankee Great. Card number 25, some guy named Cliff Chambers. Card number 26, Luke Easter. Card number 27, Wally Westlake. Card number 28, Elmer Vallo. Never heard of him. Card number 29, Bob Kennedy. No relation to any presidents. Card number 30, the great Warren Spahn. Truly one of the greatest left-handed pitchers of all time. 
That's his 1951 Redback card. Card number 37, Gil Hodges. This is one of the cards that I did not get in that set, and I picked this one up on eBay. You can see a pretty bad crease and some marks on it. I'll probably end up buying a nicer version of that one. I'm a huge Dodger fan, but I had, you know, it was a deal, so I got it, and I wanted to fill the set. Card number 32, some guy named Henry Thompson. Card number 33, some guy named Will, William Whirl. Card number 34, Grady Hatton. Card number 35, the great Al Rosen. Cleveland Indian fans know him. Card number 36, Gus Zerniel. Now check this out. Traded to the Philadelphia A's this year. The powerful six foot two, blah, blah, blah. That's card number 36. Oh, and also card number 36. Powerful Chicago White Sox outfielder. Apparently he was traded and they made two different cards and I do have them both. Card number 37, West Westrom. Cool name. Card number 38, the great Ed, better known as Duke Schneider. Again, I'm a Dodger nut, so that was a big one for me. And I think it's gorgeous. I think these are art. I really do. Card number 39, one of the great Cincinnati Reds of all time, the hulking Ted, Ted Klozuski. Card number 40, Mike Garcia. Card number 41, some guy named Whitey Lockman. Card number 42, Ray Scarborough. Card number 43, Maurice McDermott. Card number 44, Sid Hudson. Card number 45, Andy Simic. Card number 46, Billy Goodman. Card number 47, some guy named Tommy Glavino. Card number 48, the very popular Eddie Stinky. Card number 49, Al Zarilla. Card number 50, Hall of Famer, Monty Irvin. I think he's a Hall of Famer. Great, for sure. Card number 50. Card number 51, Eddie Robinson. The final card in the set. Card number 52, Tommy Holmes. Check this out. Now managing Hartford in the Eastern League, he compiled. Oh, wait a minute. Card number 52, Tommy Holmes. Boston Reliable Boston Brave outfielder. He hit blah, blah, blah. So apparently the dude retired and became a, a manager. That's card number 52. Both virgin versions, excuse me. And then I've got another one. You can see it had a crease. So I got a better one. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I've got 52 of the 54 cards. I love this set so much. I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am that I found this set today. I love it. So I need to pick up two more cards. Well, actually one. Phil Rizzuto I own. That's card number five. And card number seven, Howie Pollitt. If you got a Howie Pollitt laying around, let me know. I'm going to have to eBay that sucker to complete my 1951 Redbacks. I didn't really talk about the backs. So the Redbacks are simply red. It was a game. You, you'd you buy these cards in a one. There was one card. No, excuse me. There was two cards per... Oh, I don't want to lie to you. There was either one or two cards. I think there was two cards in each pack. And as you can see, you had a foul ball. You had a stolen base. You had a foul ball. 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 Stolen base. Strike. Ball. Strike. Ball. Ball. Foul out. So it was like a whole game... And it sounds pretty boring to me, but whatever. That was it. I actually bought a pack, and I have this, and I, I know where this one is. I have a pack of these cards that I bought that day that I put together this set in 1988. And I opened it. And that's not the smartest thing to do if you're trying to have good value, but I just wanted to say I, could, I opened a pack from 1951. So you know what? I'm going to say it again. I opened a pack from 1951. All right, there you go. The 1951 Topps Redback set. I'm one card away. And he's not even somebody anybody's ever heard of. I think it's time for me to go on eBay. What do you think? I am so excited to have this back in my life. There's one other collectible that I haven't found yet that I've given up on. But I think I'm going to find it now. I found this. Why wouldn't I find that? I'm not going to share that with you right now. Because it'll just make me sad. <laughs> the 1951 Redback set, Topps Redback set, I 
think it's gorgeous. I think this stuff is art. I collect Disney pins and baseball cards that I think are gorgeous. I think these are art. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Hey, you're an idiot for collecting baseball cards. You're almost 50 years old. Hey, those are awesome. Oh my gosh. They're not my oldest cards by, by actually not even close. I have a 1909 T206 Vernon Willett. When I bought it, it smelled of tobacco. It doesn't anymore. Bought it for a dollar. It's not in the best shape ever, but, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm not sure where that is. So maybe I don't own a 1909 card, but that's not what we're talking about. 1951 Redback set. I'm so excited to have it. If you stayed till the end, I appreciate you. Again, my channel is normally Disney stuff, but again, it's Disney, family, food, and sports is what I originally told people this would channel would be about. And every now and then something I get excited about, I bring it to you. Again, if you're one of the new subscribers, thank you so much. If you're a veteran, thank you so much. Have a great Thanksgiving. Whenever you're watching this, as I film it, tomorrow morning is Thanksgiving. But whenever you watch this, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys for being here. Go do something awesome for somebody. Does anybody have an extra 1951 Topps Red back there? I'm trying to get rid of? I need one. That's it for now. Have the best day ever. Bye. <laughs>